Hi all, I have another very interesting game to show you of Leela Chess. So this is again Stockfish 9. It was contributed by Apache Zen, Zen Me. Uh, so the time control, 15 minutes each. Stockfish 9 running on four threads. Ryzen 7, 1700X. Leela on a GTX 1080. So let's have a look. D4 from Leela. Knight F6, C4, E6. We have the Nimzo engine defense, Ruben style variation. B6. Knight g e2, bishop a6, knight g3, pretty standard stuff. Black castles e4, knight c6, bishop d3. It's a bit of a poison pawn this because of things like queen a4. So that's not taken. Instead, e5, closing down the center, closing up rather. d5, knight a5, queen e2 protecting the c4 pawn. Black doubles the pawns now, so structural damage. d6. But white has this potentially very dangerous bishop without a counterpart. And we have already this annoying pin now. h6, the bishop drops back. So here, e3, bishop c8. White castles, knight d7. Now we see bishop c2, knight c5. If black wants to challenge this uh, pawn now, then maybe bishop b3 is, is an alternative now. And that should be okay with f4 coming later, perhaps. So bishop c2, we have knight c5. Now f4 here, so very attacking uh, game from white. We have knight d7. Black dare not take on f4 because I believe bishop takes f4 is the strongest approach here to be able to play e5 and open up this bishop against the king. Uh, if rook takes f4, on the other hand, then there's knight d7. This should be okay for black. But the way to play this, I believe, is on e takes f4 to play bishop takes, and we have, for example, knight d7, e5 immediately, and this position is favorable for white. For example, like this, this continuation. Uh, also, let's have a quick look uh, while we're there on d takes. This is, you might be wondering about d takes here. There's a beautiful variation here. Can you see what white can play in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. This is just a game variation. Bang, bishop takes h6 is pretty destructive. For example, like this, queen d3 threatening, queen h7 checkmate. This is much better for white. For example, like this, is, is going to be a big advantage for white. And um, here, if instead of queen g5, rook takes f5, this position is really dangerous for black. So it just demonstrates some of the dangers of this position if white breaks with e5. So, yeah, we see this seemingly passive retreat. So, knight d7, f5, white establishes a pawn wedge, leader establishes an aggressive pawn wedge, and it looks as though, you know, f6 in the future could be really dangerous. King h7, and now c5, making sure that black can't have a nice knight entrenched on c5 later. Black takes of a pawn. Uh, taking with the knight leaves f6, of course. And there's an actually a very beautiful line here with queen e1 or queen f2, either queen e1 or queen f2, with the idea, for example, um, of playing in this position. Can you guess if I give you five seconds? Another beautiful variation. Bang, bishop takes h6. For example, like this. Bang, knight f5 check. And then this is mating. So there are some very, very beautiful variations behind the scenes here. So d takes c5. Bishop d2, rook g8, rook f3, knight f6. King h1, uh, not king h1, knight h1, just to let the rook slip to h3 here, potentially. But first, bishop g5, tactical. Black dare not take because it will just get mated, it will just get mated with rook h3, and then mating. Uh, so we have bishop g5, queen d6, now the rook slips over to h3, rook h8. Now knight g3, the knight returns to the fray. Bishop d7, rook f1, so it's a nice pawn wedge. Uh, Aggressive bishop without counterpart. But guess what here? What does Leela do in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here. Yeah. 
Okay, voluntarily gives up that bishop now. Sometimes this is a prelude to a light square campaign. Knight h5. We have queen d6. It's far too dangerous to tease with this because of rook g3. That's, that's, g7 is going to be collapsing. It's far too dangerous. So qu the, uh, queen d6. And now bishop d3 is played. This bishop's kind of hemmed in by its own pawns at the moment, but now we see, well, pretty soon, something done about that. Here, bishop b5. Just trying to weaken black on, on those light squares and get rid of this problem piece, potential problem piece. Uh, c4 here, h4, king h8. Some shuffling around now at yeah, this part of the game. So the rooks seemingly shuffling. Okay, that's c6 break. And yeah, this knight remains on a5 for, for quite a while. So white's intensifying the pressure now on g7, and you'll notice potentially things like queen f8 are creeping in. So queen d8 protects the f8 square. White keeps the tactical eye on things. Now here, this looks at h5 potentially. Uh, well, it's actually threatening queen h1 though, that's the major thing about it. Queen h1 checkmate. So rook f3 gives the king an escape square. So yeah, some shuffling around at this point in the game. Is Lula making any progress? Well, rook d5, the rook's changing tune here for the center file. Quite a lot of shuffling in this one. So we have a position which clearly looks very nice for Lula. But how is progress going to be made here? So queen f2 here, queen g1. Quite a lot of probing and shuffling. Rook g6, rook goes back. I'll wake him up when something happens. Okay, so king f8, rook g4. So Lila can also play very boring engine games, like the best of them. <laughs> With shuffling, no, no, there's going to be something exciting. Coming up here, actually, rook g3 is played queen c7, and now actually something different, queen g4 is creeping in. The possibility now of queen g6, and this is really dangerous for black. Black plays queen f7. If queen e7, then queen g6... This this is really end of game for black. So uh and uh if for okay, like knight takes g seven. This so this is pretty destructive. So black has to be very careful. So queen f seven. But now guess what's cause white a big advantage in this position? What does white play here? If I give you five seconds. Okay, queen g6 forces exchange of queen to a tempo as well on the rook. Nice wedge pawn, rook f3, and uh, yeah, this was this was a difficult position. The king's tied to g7, can't move away from rook e5. So black has, is actually losing material now. Rook takes e5. Uh, so here, rook d5 now. Now it looks too dangerous to play knight takes e4 because of things like rook d7 for rook f7 threatening checkmate. Uh, it looks just far too dangerous, this position. We have king e7. And yeah, white's got a very big advantage now. Lena's got a very big advantage. And that the king comes to protect the center. And another pawn drop bites the dust. <coughs> Pardon me. And yeah, black's getting pretty desperate now. It's just shedding pawns all over the place. Uh, yeah, here, if rook takes d4, then there's knight c6, check. Okay, d5. It's a big advantage for white. And 
the only thing to be concerned about is this April for a moment. But Black Sea are desperate now, giving up the peace here. This is just absolutely winning for right now. It doesn't matter even sacking the rook, it's still winning. So uh these these pawns are just absolutely winning. We have rook c seven played. Yeah, if rook takes just taking this pawn, the other pawn's dropping. It's just just absolutely winning for white. So rook c seven. And here the game ended. Now the game chooser mentioned the game caught my attention because of the way Leela Zero played this game, very Karpovian like, got a positional advantage and started putting some putting some pressure on the Black King. And then when Black's pieces went defensive, she started probing back and forth on all three sides of the board looking for a weakness in Black's camp. On move seventy nine, Leela played the strong move Queen G four due to the awkward arrangement of Black's pieces and weaker king. This move was very powerful and led to a win. If we go back to move 18, Leela plays an interesting pawn sacrifice with the move c5. I think the idea behind it is if the knight took on c5, the knight would be further away from defending black king. Yeah, as, as, I, as I mentioned, some variation there with f6. Uh, he also mentions move the, the bishop b5 was a powerful idea, uh, trading off the, the light square bishop, leaving uh, a good white active knight versus a bad black knight scenario. Uh, so at that at this point, Stockfish thought the position was equal. And Leela thinks it was like plus one for White. Strategically, White looks better with more space. And the game creator wanted to point out a visual thing. If you go to move seventy, you can visually see how each and every one of the white pieces is much more active than Blacks. Uh, just visually crushing. So, yeah, move seventy. If we have a look. Yeah, it's a nice game choice. So thank you uh, to the game creator Apache's Enemy for that one. Fascinating one. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Comments, questions, likes, shares, appreciated. Thanks very much.